Less than five years after the Iraqi branch of the Ba'ath Party is founded, it makes its first grab for power. An alliance of army officers, Ba'athists, and communists plot to overthrow the pro-British monarchy of King Faisal. The leader of the plotters is a general in the Iraqi army named Abdul Karim Qasem. In just over a year, in an ironic twist, Qasem himself will be the target of a dramatic assassination attempt by none other than the young Saddam Hussein. Later as the dictator of Iraq, Saddam will admit that the Qasem affair changed the whole course of his future life. Baghdad, July 14, 1958. The Ba'ath Party's dream of overthrowing the Iraqi government is a reality. Army rebels storm the royal palace and massacre King Faisal II, along with his wife and children. There was a coup d'etat in Iraq uh, in uh, the army, which, uh, or elements of the army, overthrew the monarchy uh, in Iraq and brought to power not Ba'athists, but brought to power Arab nationalists, although the Ba'athists supported the coup, and also Iraqi nationalists and also communists. At the end of the pro-British regime, army officers who took part in the ill-fated pro-German rebellion against the British back in 1941 are applauded as Iraqi patriots. Men who had been imprisoned or exiled are now rewarded, especially those who had joined the Ba'ath Party. One of them is Saddam Hussein's uncle, Kairala Tulfa. Tulfa is given public recognition at last. He is made head of school's education in Tikrit. Although members of the Ba'ath Party are appointed to the new Iraqi government, the regime is now dominated by the pro-Soviet Iraqi Communist Party, the largest in the Arab world. The Ba'ath Communist Alliance soon turns sour, one communist official succeeds in getting Saddam's uncle, Kairala Tulfa, fired from his job. It is the event that triggers Saddam Hussein's first confirmed murder. Uh, Saddam was commissioned, basically, by Kairala to kill a local Communist Party official in Tikrit, um, who'd upset Kairala by basically saying he didn't have the, the necessary qualifications to do the job he was doing in, in Tikrit's educational establishment. Outraged, Tulfa sends his nephew to get revenge. He gives Saddam his own pistol for the job. Saddam coolly ambushes his target, killing him with a single shot to the head. It is his first step in a lifetime career of cold-blooded killing. I'm told, by the way, that uh, his murder the Communist Party official was very efficient. So at a very early age, he had the hallmark of an executioner. The man who led the coup against the government, General Abdul Karim Qasem, is the new leader of Iraq. To strengthen his communist ties, soon after taking power, Qasem invites 2,000 Eastern European and Soviet advisors to Baghdad. Qasem's friendship with the Soviets raises intense suspicion in Washington. The Cold War is dividing the world into two armed camps, one dominated by the Soviet Union and the other by the United States. Many inside Iraq and outside now see Qasem as a threat to the West. If one could say that there was one thing the Ba'athists at that stage hated more than the colonialists, it was the communists. As the left-leaning regime of uh, Abdul Karim Qasim emerges in Iraq after 1958, the Ba'ath begins to organize conspiratorially inside the armed forces and elsewhere. 
the Baathists, Qasem's ties with the communists are bad enough, but he now also rejects their policy of uniting the Arab world. Within a year of coming to power with the help of the Ba'ath party, the very same Ba'athist leaders plot to kill Qasem. Saddam Hussein is selected to be part of a five-man squad assigned to carry out the hit. One of the reasons Saddam was recruited to the Ba'ath party in the late 1950s is the Ba'ath party in Baghdad was made up of middle-class intellectuals. The Ba'ath Party desperately needed muscle, and that is why Kairola said that uh, Saddam should join the Ba'ath Party, recommended him to join the Ba'ath Party, because he was good with his fists, he was a killer, and he was somebody that they could get out in the streets of Baghdad and get their message across. And that, that is really the origins of Saddam's association with the Ba'ath Party. It was not ideological, it was physical. The attempt to assassinate General Qasem is launched on October 7, 1959. Saddam's job is to provide covering fire for the other assassins, but the attack turns into a bloody fiasco. Saddam is caught in the crossfire and wounded in the leg by one of his fellow assassins. In the attack, General Qasem is badly hurt, but lives. His driver is killed along with one of the would-be assassins. Saddam runs for his life and goes into hiding. In the following weeks, several of Saddam's co-conspirators are captured, tried, and sentenced to death. Saddam is sentenced to death in his absence, but succeeds in getting out of Iraq first to Syria, then to Egypt. It will be almost four years before Saddam can return to Baghdad, years during which he makes some powerful and influential allies. Among them is none other than the legendary founder and leading light of the Ba'ath Party, Michel Aflouk. Like most of the Ba'ath Party leadership based in Syria, Michel Aflouk is a theoretician and an intellectual. He needs operatives of a tougher sort. He sees in the young and ruthless Saddam a potential strongman of immense promise, a thug to do the dirty work. From Syria, Aflouk sends Saddam to Egypt, where he spends the next three and a half years. There, Saddam lives in an expensive district of Cairo and enrolls at Cairo University to study law. In Egypt, Saddam marries his uncle Kairala Tulfa's daughter, Sagida, firmly cementing his most important family tie. This is when there are allegations, although not altogether proven, uh, that uh, he established contact with the uh, CIA and the American secret agencies in Cairo. And the reason put forward for that was that uh, the Americans, uh, just as other people, were very nervous uh, about Abdul Karim Qasim, the leader of Iraq's connection with the Communist Party and through the Communist Party to the Soviet Union. In February 1963, Iraqi army officers, some aligned with the Ba'ath Party,